Good morning. morning. I welcome you to worship on this Pentecost Sunday. Christ is risen. risen Hallelujah. You thought we were done last week. You're wrong. (laughs) This is kind of this bridge, this moment between that proclamation that Christ is risen and then what our lives look like after that. So we're about to enter a whole new season in the church year about, we've, we've been since Advent, since December, talking about who God is, and now we get to begin talking about who we are as people who follow after God. And it starts with flames of fire, the ones that are hovering right above your heads. And I don't know what that looks like online, but that's what that is. Those little tongues of fire. This is the story of the Spirit showing up and surprising all of God's people. So, If you feel the urge to talk in different languages, you're welcome to it. If you feel the need to dance around today, I don't know, we are Lutherans. You you can dance like this, but nothing like this. This this is a recognition that God is alive within us, and it's our church celebration color of red. If you didn't get the memo, that's okay. There's still red somewhere in your body. (laughs) Because God is within us and alive within us is the lifeblood that pumps through our veins. So my prayer is that today, this Pentecost day, you know God's presence with you. That you feel God's presence that encourages you, that binds you together to other people, that reminds you your sins are indeed forgiven and that you hold the promise of eternal life as we worship together this day. It is our final time of remembering our baptism and the the good news of joining that gift in our lives to the death and resurrection of Christ. So we begin. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit, O God. And renew our lives with your forgiveness, your grace, and your love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. In the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Gathered in God's presence, we are at peace. So may the peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to stand and share a sign of peace with one another. That's a handshake, an elbow bump, a little Lutheran dance. We proclaim God's presence in our midst in song, so let us join together in singing God is Here.
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us join together in our prayer of the day. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones, and your spirit brings truth to the world. Send us this spirit, transform us by your truth, and give us language to proclaim your gospel through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to be seated as our choir leads us in praise. Good morning. Our first reading this morning is from uh, the book of Acts, second chapter. Originally, Pentecost was a Jewish Thanksgiving type festival celebrated seven weeks after Passover. On this particular Pentecost, however, the Holy Spirit is poured out upon the entire community of believers, just as Jesus had promised and the scripture had prophesied. Empowered by the Spirit, the entire community bears witness to God's activity in multiple languages. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them, abil them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? 
Parthenians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Livia belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. We'll read, Psalm, we'll read Psalm 104 responsibly. O Lord, how manifold are your works, and wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There go the ships and the Leviathan that you have formed to sport in it. When you give to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. Who looks on the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have been. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Our second reading this morning is from Romans chapter 8. By pouring the Holy Spirit into our hearts, God gives us the promised first fruit of eternal life so that we await God's future in hope. In the meantime, the Spirit also intercedes for us by carrying the prayers of our weak human hearts to God. Paul writes, We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope is, that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's rise in honor of
gospel reading is from John 15 and 16. While speaking to his disciples before his death, Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit as the helper and describes the difference the Spirit will make in their lives and in the world. Hear the word of God. Jesus said, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. But I have said these things to you, so that when the hour comes, you may remember that I told you about them. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I've said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin, about righteousness and judgment, about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to Christ. I invite you to be seated and have our children come forward for our children's message. Come have a seat. Good morning. How are you guys today? Tired? Did you go play outside all day yesterday? No? No, it was a beautiful day. It's going to be a beautiful day today. At least play a little bit today. You went to a friend's house and had a bonfire, but your dad's friend's house. Very cool. Kind of fun, isn't it? You went into the woods. How big were the flames? Were they taller than you are? Oh, my goodness. Way taller than you. Mm, Cool. Nothing else caught on fire, right? Okay, good. Well, today is kind of a story about fire. Um, I have little fires that are hanging above our heads. Did you hear that story of the big whooshing sound? And that was the sound of the spirit coming. No, it's not balloons. Nope, I cut out cray paper. There, now you've, you've ruined the mystery. <laughs> and, and all the disciples that were gathered in the rooms had these little tongues that looked like fire above their heads not starting anything on fire, but it was a sign that God was with them in a whole new way, in a whole different way. And what do you think they did? Did they stay in the room? What did they go do? Yeah, they went and told people about God in different languages. The disciples weren't supposed to stay in their own little room, nice and safe and tucked away. God kind of pushed them all out, whoosh, and sent them all out to tell the good news. Yeah, kind of like sending them out to tell other people about God. If they stayed in their rooms, would anybody ever hear what God was doing? No, God needed them to go out and tell people. Yeah, they'd be totally absent-minded. They would forget and not tell anybody the good news. So God's Spirit helped them go out of their nice, safe rooms to tell other people. Do you remember the butterflies that we had flying above us for the last couple months? Uh Uh-huh. And do you remember I told you there'd be something fun with them? Mm Mm-hmm. Butterflies start as what? A little caterpillar. And then? And then it goes into a cocoon and then it comes out? As a butterfly. Um, do butterflies stay in the same place that they, that they were grown, that they come out? 
they stick around and they, they, when they turn into butterflies, they stop eating leaves and they start drinking the nectar out of flowers. But yeah, so they stay around and they eat a little bit. But butterflies are what we call migratory. Do you know what that means? They migrate. They migrate. Good job. And migrate means, migrate means to move. They go south for the winter, like a lot of people here from the church. <laughs> They fly south. You know the butterflies that are born here, that turn into butterflies here, go all, some of them go all the way down to Mexico. That's a long distance. And then they come back. Yeah, they come back and they lay eggs and then the caterpillars and then the chrysalis and then the butterfly and then the migrate and then they come back and then they, that's what the life cycle is. So they, hang on. After they lay their eggs, they die because the next ones are coming, right? Yeah, there's a lot of dangerous things as they fly down to Mexico, isn't there? A lot of dangerous things as they fly back, but their job is to, to move. So our butterflies have moved from the nice, safe sanctuary space where they got all comfortable and they started showing up everywhere around here. And they have gone out to tell the good news. Just like the disciples are going out to tell the good news. So when Sunday school is done, you need to come find me. I have these sheets that have a picture of all 16 of our butterflies. And your job is to go find where those butterflies are hiding around the church. You already found 13 of them, I know. You guys, you're going to have to go fast. I have prizes for the first kid that finds them and prizes for everybody else. And then I also have prizes for the first adult that brings me their sheet that has found it as well. So we have a little bit of playtime after church today. But what I want you to remember is that we're not supposed to stay in the nice safe place in the church where we only talk about God at church. Wherever we go, God wants us to talk about God's love and the awesome things that God has done for us, like forgiving us, like helping us, like being with us all the time. Are you ready to pray with me? All right, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for your love that fills up my heart and explodes to tell other people. Help me trust you that you're going to help me share this good news. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for coming up and talking with me. We do have some of those coloring pages if you want. After Sunday school, come find me and I'll have these sheets for you guys, okay? And you have to give everybody else like a a five-minute head start since you've already been sneaky. No. No? Yep, some of them are hidden easy and others are not. I had a little bit of fun this week. Well, it's not something that we talk about very often, this Holy Spirit and what the Spirit does with us. We have a whole lot of God the Father and a whole lot of God the Son, but when it comes to the Spirit, we don't quite know what to do with him, her, never it. But God is spirit, and God has no gender. So I'm going to play around and call, call the spirit her today, just to throw you off a little bit. God's spirit isn't confined to the places where we like to confine God's spirit to. But the hard part is then figuring out what God's spirit does, where God's spirit is. And, and the stories that we hear can, can really feel foreign to us. Um, the stories of people who are speaking in other languages or who fall down into the aisles and, and roll or those who are dancing around. It feels, feels very foreign to us Lutherans who sit as quietly as we can in church and who agree as loudly as possible and who celebrate by going, well, that's very nice. <laughs> God's spirit makes us do things that doesn't always feel normal or comfortable, that we can't quite explain away of how God's spirit works. We can't quite put our thumb on it and say, this, this is the only way 
that we know God's spirit is working. And there are churches that try and do that. You, you must speak in tongues. That, that way we know God's spirit is with you. But even then, we, we can't pin down just what God's spirit does. So it's a whole lot easier to talk about Jesus, who we know, who we've seen, the works that he's done, the ways that God has worked within us in hearing the stories of Jesus. But their spirit is everywhere in our scriptures. From Genesis, from the very beginning, the spirit of God is hovering over the unformed earth. The Spirit is given to people who have to speak God's message, to Elijah, to all the prophets. It says God's Spirit came upon them and they spoke. Or the Spirit is given to the different people that were chosen as kings in our Old Testament. To Saul and to David, the Spirit of God came upon them and rested on them as they attempted to lead God's people. The Spirit shows up in Jesus' baptism. That as he walks into the water, the Spirit shows up as he comes out like a dove, fluttering and floating down upon him. The Spirit is at work in the readings we hear today. The one that's read every Pentecost that should be very familiar to you with that really long list of different countries that are foreign to our tongues. The way that God's Spirit shows up in the whoosh of a wind, in in tongues of fire, that hover above the disciples in a way that is pushing them out. This story that we have from Acts, this time when God's people gather to give a regular offering. Uh, Pentecost was a normal holiday, 50 days after Passover. When the first fruits of your harvest, you bring it to God and ask for God's blessing and give God thanks for something that grew out of the ground. That's my experience. (laughs) Look, it grew. Thanks, God. (laughs) But you bring to God everything that you have just harvested in gratitude. And as people come from not just Jewish territories, but all the way from Rome on a boat, that's a long journey. They come bringing these gifts to God from all these different places. And in that moment, God chooses to speak to all of them in their own language, languages these disciples never would have had the opportunity to study. Babel hadn't been invented yet. There is this gift that the Spirit gives. That makes us a little uncomfortable. (laughs) Is that the only way we know God's Spirit is working? Is if we can speak this different language? Or, Or even if we can speak coherently about our own faith? That's hard, I know. To, to put thoughts together, does that mean the Spirit's not at work if I can't figure out what to say? What does the Spirit look like for us today? Is it really in rolling around on the ground? Is it really in these big emotional moments where the music swells and we feel this sense of, this, this sense of something big being around us? Is it always a big movement of the Spirit? And if so, why don't I have superpowers? I would love to go talk to anybody about anything in whatever language that I don't have to do the work of studying. I'd like that a lot. That'd be a whole lot of fun. Does God's spirit work within us if we don't show those outward things? And I think for that, we look at all those readings that we have for today, at all of them, at at the scriptures about the spirit that groans for us when we don't know how to pray, which means, huh? is a faithful and beautiful prayer because it's God's Spirit talking within you as well. Jesus talks about the Spirit as as the advocate. Um, Another word would be helper or counselor. Think about um, the ways that uh, lawyers argue for someone's behalf. The, The one who is able to say and put together all these things for you that helps you and guides you. The Spirit at work within us means that God is right alongside us to help us, to comfort us, to guide us in our lives. Jesus also calls the Spirit the Spirit of truth. And that her job is to speak to the whole entire world and tell them the truth, the truth about sin, that the true sin is unbelief in God. The Spirit will talk about the truth of what righteousness is, that Jesus sits at the right hand of God the Father, that everything that Jesus is is in right relationship with who God the Father is. 
And the Spirit tells the truth about what judgment is. Not that you have done something wrong, but that the whole way that our world is ruled is backwards. The Spirit tells us the truth about who we are as people who trust God. That we are not the ones that are judged, but we are the ones that are embraced. And the Spirit's work is to create that trust and faith within us. But there's one problem with the Spirit. The Spirit doesn't have vocal cords. The Spirit is not human to walk beside us. The Spirit is not human, male or female. The Spirit is not all on its own working. The Spirit needs you. The Spirit needs your vocal cords, needs your gift of life, needs your trust to do God's work within you and through you. God's Spirit relies on us to have faith. And after a time of waiting and preparation, after times of suffering and times of struggle, is when God's Spirit is most near us to do the work that we need to do to take that leap of faith to say something about God's deeds of power within us. Today we are honoring our grads and blessing them as they're about to go off into their own lives and their own worlds. If you remember any of those times, or if you can guess at the kinds of things that are swirling around in them, they've had time of preparation. It's all of their schooling has led them to this point, to, to know who they are and where they'd like to go. There's a whole lot of suffering in school, in high school, between tests, between other people, between our own procrastination. There's all this kinds of waiting now of what will happen next. That God invites us to take that step of faith to know that wherever you go and whatever plans that you have made and whatever hopes that you have ahead of you in your lives, that God promises his spirit is going to be right beside you. Through every single step, through every single misstep, God promises to not let go of you. That no matter where you go and what you decide and how many times your major is going to change or how many times your dreams might kind of falter, that God promises to be right beside you to use you and your voice and your experiences to bless the people around you. Grads, you go, but never by yourself. You are taking this leap of faith of stepping into what God might have in front of you that none of us really know what we're doing. But God promises to be with us. And the same goes for all of us. Whether we know our next steps or we're done taking steps or we're just enjoying life, whatever is ahead of us, God's Spirit promises to be with us to tell us the truth about where God lives, right within our own hearts, that we never walk alone. That the Spirit is truly the one with us. Whether we feel it in those moments where there's something bigger at work, whether we're just moving through our lives hoping that God is there, We can trust that the Spirit is there. And we use our voice to share the truth of who God is and what Jesus has done for us. Trusting that the Spirit is the one that's working within us to speak, that's working within us to care for one another, that the Spirit is with us in our unspoken prayers that just go, ah, (laughs) and that God's Spirit is the one that is with us in the time that we're yearning and waiting for something to feel real. That the Spirit is with us in the times when we will move from believing to knowing that Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us stand and sing our faith together in Holy Spirit, Root of Life.
where we confess who our God is using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to be seated. And I would like to invite our graduates and their families forward as we have this time of blessing and renewal on our way to what God has in store. So Sam and your family, please come up. <laughs> Mason and your family, Walker and yours, please come forward. Life presents us with some significant milestones, and as the church, we rejoice to surround you guys in these times with prayer. So today we honor and bless those who are moving in this special time of accomplishment and transition, and we pray for you together as brothers and sisters in Christ. In baptism and confirmation, we've made promises to support and care for these members of the community of faith, to teach and live God's word, to nurture faith, to care for one another and the world God made, and to work for justice and peace. So we have wrapped these people in love and the promises of, that God has made. So, dear family and members of Salem, do you promise to support, to pray for, and to encourage these young adults in their journey of faith and life? If so, answer, we will, and we ask God to help and guide us. Dear friends in Christ, there was a time when your parents held you in their arms and rocked you to sleep. They cuddled you in a blanket to keep you warm and safe. You will soon launch into a new life, away from the safety and security of home and family, of church and community. So as you go into the world, we want to send you with a gift of a blanket that was made by one of our members, Laura Hahn, that it can be a reminder of God's love and presence wrapped around you, of the nurture of your parents' love and this community, and the promise that you are never alone. Let me sneak past you and get these blankets. Jessica, Mary, Tim. I invite you um, to, to turn and face the cross, to wrap your graduates in this warm sanctuary with that lovely warm blanket. <laughs> And parents, I'm handing you a blessing that you will read together. Kim, two. So parents, will you please bless your children? You have given our lives a deeper meaning and a deeper calling. Because of you, we better understand the nature of God's love, of joy, of forgiveness. We thank God for the gift you have been to our lives. Wherever you go, you will always be part of us. Wherever you go, our love goes with you. We bless you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. May this blanket remind you of our love and the warmth of this faith community. For the times when we cannot wrap you in our arms, wrap yourself in this blanket and know that in God's family, you are never alone. Students, I invite you to bless your parents for all the work that they have done, 
all the patience that they have had, <laughs> all the forgiveness they have given you. <laughs> Please bless your parents with those words. You have given of your heart and of your home. You have loved and cared for me even when it was difficult. Thank you for the sacrifices you made to give me life and for the power and selflessness of your love. I honor you for your courage, your patience, your sacrifice, your wisdom, and your undying love. I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Wherever I go, you will always be part of me. Wherever I go, your love and example will continue to bless me. I will always be your child, and I thank God for blessing my life with you. I invite you to stay there and wipe your tears. <laughs> and when you're ready, to turn back. Because graduates, now that you're stepping onto this next part of your journey, I invite you to hear these words from Jeremiah 29. God says, for Surely I know the plans I have for you, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. Then when you call upon me and come to and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me. If you seek me with all of your heart, I will let you find me, says the Lord. The way will not always be clear, your life will not always be hopeful, but God will travel with you through all of it. And as you test and stretch your boundaries, your abilities, and all you've been taught, may you find a community that helps you feel firmly grounded in God's love. Together, let us pray. God of community, we ask your blessing on these young people as they enter a new period in their lives. Bless them and grant them your gifts joy as they live among your faithful people, an openness in hearing your word, a thankfulness in sharing your supper, an eagerness to share the good news of Christ in their words and actions, dedication in serving all people, following the example of the Lord Jesus, and a hunger for justice and peace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with them, now and forever. Amen. Let us honor these graduating seniors with all they have accomplished and our encouragement for all that's to come. I have cards as well from the church, and then you guys can head back. You're welcome. Together we pray for all those who are on the journey of faith in this life. Almighty God, we pray for your church around the world, for those called into leadership over churches, those called into leadership over regions and synods, those called over the whole church itself. May we work together for your mercy and justice in this world and give us each the confidence to speak of your mighty deeds of power within our lives. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. We pray for the earth, our precious home. We give thanks for the diversity of plant and animal life on our planet. Empower us by your spirit to be wise and faithful stewards of all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. We pray for those who are in need around the world, for victims of crimes, for victims of sexual abuse and exploitation, for those who are incarcerated, for all those who are suffering in any way, in body, in mind, and in spirit. We lift them to you as we've promised to pray for them. May your spirit so move in their lives that they know your presence with them as advocate, as truth teller, and as forgiver. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. We pray for this congregation and its ministries, for all those who are planning our summer ministries and our good work in this community. 
Bless these plants that we have, O God, that they may feed your people and give your goodness to them. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. This time we bring to God the gifts that God has first placed in our hands.
Let us join together in our offering prayer. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We are fed and nourished by God as the Spirit unites us in communion. We remember in the night in which Jesus was handed over, he took bread, and he blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You are invited to come and eat of the bread and take of the wine. If you have need, we have gluten-free wafers. The outside two rings has red wine. The inside circle has white grape juice. So please take what you are comfortable with. And these small cups can be placed in the baskets on either side of the sanctuary. All those who believe that Christ is present in this meal are welcome here at God's table. So come eat. Be filled with the Spirit.
And may the body and our blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. And the grace and peace of God come upon you today and stay with you always. Amen. For those of you heading off to the last Sunday school of the year, God bless, oh, God bless and guide you. Play around a little bit. Enjoy God's gift of love and life in one another. You guys can head on back. And before they completely disappear, can we give a round of applause to our Sunday school teachers? They really are an amazing group of people. And if you would like to join them, we have all summer to, to train you, to teach you, to get our, our materials in your hands, to see how we do Sunday school. Um, we would love to have additional people. Um, and we're looking for this fall to have both a lead and an extra teacher, um, just as somebody to sit with, to, to build in the faith of our kids without all the responsibility. So if you just want to sit in the room and hang out with kids, this, this is your calling. Um, join us in raising up the faith of our kids at Salem. Um, just a few announcements. Remember, we're wearing our name tags in this, the next month all the way through the end of June um, as a way of helping get to know each other. And the new members that were just welcomed, as you head on back to get some treats, take a pause at that board on the right to see their faces, um, kind of help put names together. And then they also have a mailbox number. If you want to write a, a welcome to Salem card or I look forward to meeting you or what have you just done, <laughs> If you'd like to welcome them, um, use those mailboxes. Send notes to each other, even if you just write a, a random one um, and stick it in there. You know, I'm, I'm glad you're part of this community and just pick a mailbox number and stick it in there. Um, let's bless one another by, by making those connections. And better yet, the directory is on its way to the printer. <laughs> when we get those in our hands, please, Lord, within 14 business days, um, take those out, um, pick a face, and pray for that person that day. That can be part of your daily devotions, to open up that, pray for, the, pray for one another in this community, and then write a little note and stick it in their mailbox. Hey, I prayed for you today. Don't even have to say who it is if you don't want to, but make those connections and use those mailboxes for those kinds of connections. Bless one another that way. Um, this Tuesday at 6.30, we are starting a anybody who's interested Bible study. So this isn't a men's, this isn't a women's. And this Tuesday, we're talking about what it is we're looking for. Um, what, what, what do we need to help encourage our faith, to challenge us, to open our minds, to struggle together with? So this Tuesday at 6.30 is that kind of open discussion meeting. Um, those Bible studies will only be an hour. So if you're trying to plan on what's happening in your life, 6.30 to 7.30 on those Tuesdays. Welcome to stop by. And then for the women's Bible study that meets on Wednesdays at 3, look, I got the date and time right, um, we are reading chapter 3 again and going to discuss it together. Um, if you're in the middle of that book and chapter 3 was crazy, uh, skip the explanations and the examples that the author gives. So as you're reading along, once it gets to, for example, skip that section so you can get a flow of the whole idea of what that chapter's about. Um, if you have no idea what I'm talking about but would like to, we do have extra copies of the book in our office area in the printer room. So you're welcome to grab one of those. Um, it's about how to read the Bible. And chapter 3 was a heavy lift, so we're going to do it again this coming Wednesday. Um, for our graduates, um, as we finish this song, I invite you and your families to head back, um, get some pictures with our cake, and then get the first slices, because that's the benefit of being a grad. So <laughs> as I process out, that's kind of your signal that you can head out to. And for anyone who would like to be part of the great butterfly search of Salem Lutheran Church, I have those papers with me. Just grab a hold of them. I'll, I'll give you a hint. The butterflies are all kind of in the narthex area and then on the way and in the fellowship hall. So you do not have to go searching, 
you know, down the education wing or within any of the classrooms. It's just in this entryway and down the hall. Again, prizes for people who are doing it and a special prize for the first, for the first person that finds them. Are there any other announcements and ways we're using our faith? Come on up, Kevin. I'm sure most of you have enjoyed the choir throughout this year. They'll, this is, they'll have one more time to sing next Sunday, but I'm, I'm glad that with all the support that you've given the choir throughout this year, it's been wonderful, and for the Bell Choir too. Um, so speaking of kind of being done with the year, we've got summer music coming up. So the choir is going to be singing the second Sunday of each month, and we're going to practice at 8.30 that morning before the 9 o'clock service. And so if anybody wants to just kind of be a part of the summer choir, Show up at 8.30 on the second Sunday of each month and just sing along with us. Also, we're going to have the volunteer choir and things like that, and we also have a list of openings for special music. And if we don't get that filled out, we've got someone that's willing to make phone calls to try to get people scheduled, too, for special music. If you have grandchildren, if you've got a family member coming up for the summer that wants to do something, please let us let the church office know, and we will try to get them booked into some part of the service. So it's a wonderful opportunity for um, visitors to share their talents with us also. So we're looking forward to a good summer. As Pastor Amanda mentioned, there is cake and cupcakes in the back for the graduates. And what I did is I made a small individual cake for each one of the graduates. And I would like a group picture with each of you holding your, your cake. And we will not cut into those unless we run out of cupcakes. So those are for you to take home and share with your family. And then for everybody to know that we got our new coffee maker. Woohoo! <laughs> And I will hang around here this morning if anybody wants a brief tutorial on how to operate the coffee maker. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, it's really awesome. It's uh, thermal pots. We no longer have to worry about cords. And I want to thank the guys that stayed after Bible study on Friday morning to hook it up for us so Kathy and I could use it for the funeral on Friday. It was awesome. Thanks. Yay. Any other announcements? All right, let us receive God's blessing and then go into this world guided by the Spirit. I invite you to stand. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. God look on you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us join together in singing God of Tempest, God of Whirlwind.
Go in peace, rejoice, and be glad. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia. Have a great week.